Welcome to everybody. Welcome to the Club Metaverse podcast. I am here with the one, the only, the original uh, Nigerian nightmare, the great Christian Okoye. I'm so honored to get to spend a little time chatting with you, sir. How are you today? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I was doing some some research uh, today just to, you know, just to kind of remind myself of all the amazing things that you did uh, with your life. And I I kind of stumbled into your time as a discus thrower um, for your for your native uh, country of Nigeria, um, and then I I read that you weren't allowed to actually uh, 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 participate in the Olympics. Was that because there was better competition, or was there something else going on there? No, it wasn't a better competition. I um, I was the best one that Nigeria has, and. Um, but uh, I don't know if it is political or they just simply made a mistake and left me out of the <laughs> list. But, um, you know, I was left out. So I was very, very disappointed. And, and, and how does one grow up starting to throw the discus? Like, like how does that even evolve? <laughs> was that something that you did in high school or how does that even start? Well, I started in high school, yes. And, um, you know, it kind of developed. Um, I was first a, a hurdler. I was hurdling, sprinting, but I was getting so big, so I had to switch to uh, switch to uh, field events, which is shot put and the discus and the hammer. Mm. And um, so that's all, you know, how we started. Uh, fr friends of mine were throwing the discus, so I just went in and tried. And the coach told me that uh, I'll be better in discus and shot put than trying to run because I was so big. <laughs> <laughs> but but um but when you were younger and and a little bit lighter framed uh were you still hitting those four three forties i mean because there's there's videotape of one of your earliest coaches saying that they clocked you at four three right out of the bat i mean that's chris johnson speed you know i mean that's like serious business like were you um timed when you were in high school at at that level of speed <laughs> you know, I don't know. When I was in high school, I wasn't, um, I don't think I was that fast. But I, when I got to college from my junior, uh, my uh, freshman in college, I became so interested in, you know, trying to, my best friend was a sprinter, you know, said technique, he was a sprinter. So I would mess around with him, telling him that I can beat him in a short distance, it's like <laughs> 20 yards and things like that. And I, a few times I beat him, but we're just messing around with each other. And um, that's how my speed kind of uh, developed. So when I started playing football, the coaches wanted to see how fast I was because I was so in shape. And um, I was running four twos and four threes in the 40. That's, that's insane. So tell me a little bit about, was it easy for you to leave um, Nigeria when you were around 21 years old and move to the US? Or was there, what was that a difficult process? Well, yes and no. Uh, at the time, you know, it was uh, very difficult to, to um, leave your family um, way back in Nigeria and come to a place where you've never been and you don't have any relatives. Right. But I do have that friend, Innocent, who was here already, he came in a year before me. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, him being here before me kind of made things easier for me, you know. Um, so at least I knew somebody that I was here already. And was he also living in California, going um, to to Azusa, uh, or? Yes, yes, the same school, Azusa Pacific. So, yeah. so he was already there, and he was like, "Hey, move over here." And did you end up crashing out at his place? Were you like living with him? Oh yeah, we became roommates, and even though I had my own place, but we we hung out throughout the time we were in college. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. And. And um, who who convinced you to try out for the football team? Um, when when I was there, you know, throughout my my time before I started playing, my friends, my friends from track and field, and uh, of course my classmates and stuff, and uh, they were telling me that I should go ahead and try football because see my size and my shape, you know, they thought I was going to be good in football, and uh, many of them were suggesting many positions that I can play, but I wasn't interested because I had never seen the game before, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Until after the Olympics. Your, your, um, 
it's okay, but your hand is covering up the uh, the camera. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's no worries, no worries at all. Um, it's just good to see you know your whole frame there. Um, but um, so so I I read a little bit online that that you were hesitant about football because you felt that it was a bit too physical. Yes. Um, is that an accurate thing? Was it like did it seem like a little bit scary? Did you play soccer in, in, in Nigeria at all? Did you do any other team sports? Yes, I played soccer. I played a little bit of basketball and volleyball and handball, of course. Uh, but uh, soccer was my love, my first love. Mm. And uh, but football is nothing like soccer. You nothing. Know? Nothing like any other sport that I had played. Nothing like track and field. It's so violent, so physical, so demanding of your physical abilities and stuff. So, especially when you played, when you played, it's to me, it's the golden era of football because it was just like, it. it it's funny if you play a a video clip from a promotion from CBS around 1989, from like when you played. Like here's like you know like leading up to the game. Here's some highlights. Every single play that they used on the highlight reel is a penalty today. You know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, you're 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 right. You're right. Football is so different today. You know, yeah. people ask me and I tell them it's a passing league today. You know, you don't see that featured back. You know, other than uh, uh, Derek Henry. Right. You know, right. Um, you don't you don't have that featured backs like uh, Walter Payton, Eric Dickerson, you know, Earl Campbell, and you know the guy that will come in and run the ball 30, 35 times a game, right. constantly. You know, uh, you don't have that. They throw the ball a lot. They put throw the ball sixty times a game, and yeah. run the ball fifteen times today. Do, do you, know? you still like uh, enjoy watching the game of football? Do you still put it on the television and watch a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah. I do, I do watch football. Um, I mean, I admire the guys that are playing today because uh, <laughs> they have it so much easier than we did when we played. Yeah. You what, know, what's so. For example, what do you think is so much easier today than it was back then? Is it in the actual game or the, even the practices? Everything about it, you know, is so much easier. That's you know, way more money that's in, in in the game now. Sure, practices are shorter. You don't wear full pads in practice anymore. Um, when we played, we wear full pads all the time. You see, so they don't do that anymore. And when you wear full pads, that means that's going to be a lot of contact. Yeah. You know, so everything is different about the game. Everything. The rules are different, protecting players, you know, which is very good because football is something that, um, you know, if you continue the way it was, you have you will have a, a lot more injured players, people, you know, walking wounded today. Yeah. But um, they have changed the game and um, I think it's for the better. Yeah, because you know, you were such a an amazing player, and you know, sadly, your career was was cut short because you know you had the nagging uh, knee injuries, and you had the incredible year in uh, 1989 where you rushed for over 1,400 yards, first team All Pro, Pro Bowler, um, and everybody wants to call you a fullback, but I remember you being a halfback. Were you actually a fullback in the um, in the roster? Did it say fullback instead of halfback? Well, you know, sometimes it said halfback, sometimes it said fullback. I'm fullback because I was the only back in the backfield, and, say, and that's a fullback position. So right. I did everything that a halfback will do and everything that a fullback will do. Because you, you were see, also so, blocking. You were also big into the blocking part. Yes, yeah, so they considered me a fullback. Right, right. I mean, when, when I was growing up, everybody thought of you as the running back. I mean, you were the scariest running back in the NFL. And like every time I ever would play a video game or, or you know, imagine my own football team, my running back was always identical to Christian Okoye, you know, number 35 <laughs> with the gigantic uh, uh, pads. Was that, were you that big or did you wear extra big pads? Because like, you know, like seeing you on the field was like, seeing Godzilla. It was like, yeah. you did this amazing thing. Well, I was big. Yeah, I played at 265. That's my weight that oh, I played wow. at. And um, my shoulder pads had to be big because of my size also. You know, so I wore the uh, uh, lineman's shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's cool. And, yeah. and during during practice uh, back then, would would you um, go pretty much full speed, like like during scrimmage, or of course, or were they trying to? Because your coach at the time um, uh, was Marty Schottenheimer, right? Yes, Marty was the coach, was the head coach, and Bruce Arians was the running back coach. Oh wow! So Bruce Arians, huh? Yeah, yeah. So yes, in practice we did nine on seven, and it was full speed. It's got, it's a uh, full full contact. <laughs> That's wild. And we did that every, every almost every day. And, and, and did you ever say to the coaching staff, "Hey, man, like you know, we got to take it a little bit easy. I'm trying to protect my knees or or, or something." Or it was. I never said such such things. You have to understand, I was in, I was new in the game, so. I didn't know what to expect. I did everything they asked me to do, you know. When other players are doing it, of course I got to do it. Right, right, right. No, no, that's yeah. – so, you know, I want to go back in time a little bit. So you go to Azusa, um, which is a Division II school. Uh, uh, I, I think it still is Division II, but definitely back then it was like, you know, not Division One football, Division Two football. And, um, you know, you rushed for, I, I believe, over 3,000 yards in college – um, something like that, like, a, you know, a hefty amount of yards. And then you get drafted in the second round by the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, did you go to the Combine back back in those days? I went to Combine, but I didn't participate in many things that they were doing there because when I was at the, uh, at the Pro Bowl, I sprained my, I mean, not Pro Bowl, at the Senior Bowl. Mm. I uh, sprained my ankle, so it was... Um, it was difficult for me to participate in everything, but I did play in the game and I did very well. Oh, nice, nice. So, 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 so you didn't uh, participate too much in the senior bowl stuff, but you played in the game, and then um, the the combine is right after the senior bowl, right? Yes, yes. And did you run the forty at least during the? I, uh, senior? No, I didn't run the forty at the uh, at the combine. No, because my ankle was messed up. It was afterwards they came to uh, my school and tied me in the forty. Oh, okay. And how many teams uh, came came to see you? Because it's not <laughs> all of them. All of them came. That's amazing. Yeah. Back it, then, it, that doesn't happen in, in yeah. a small Division two school. Well, it's kind of like uh, one of those things. Uh, you know, they hear about this guy that uh, they never heard of, and they they hear about my size, speed, and strength. So they wanted to see what I was like. Right. Yeah. And all the teams came there, huh? Yes. Did did the Dolphins ever try to, you know, just just for my own personal kind of obsession with the Miami Dolphins, did they ever look at you and did you ever have conversations with them? Of course. Of course they looked at me. Even Don Shula was my coach at the senior ball. Oh, I didn't know and that. We had uh, we had a relationship after that. We kind of became friends after that and you know even after the chiefs picked me you know we talked because uh he was like a when you leave your family far away and come here you know those every coach that you listen to is kind of like a father figure and he was to me wow that so now you just blew my mind i i, I love you even more now now it's <laughs> even a, a bigger so so what was don like you know i i of course never got the privilege to meet him you know, Don Don was a great man. I loved him. I love I loved Don. Uh, you know, I, I have to tell you this story. One quick story. I sure, um, please after retirement, I worked with um, angel soldiers, uh, kids that came back from Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we did was we raised money and we take him to like Super Bowls, basketball games, baseball games, and so on and so forth. And one time that was a, a Super Bowl in Miami. Mm. So I brought these these kids uh, to Shula's uh, steakhouse. Yeah. And um, when we got there, we sat down. That was like maybe about twenty five of them, you know, uh, sitting down waiting for dinner. And uh, somebody told me that uh, Coach Shula is in there having dinner with his family. So I walked in. I said, uh, Coach, um, sorry to disturb you and your family having dinner here, but um, I have some kids outside. When you get a chance after dinner, could you please come out and say hello to them? You know, that would be awesome. They will love it. He said, Sure. So I get I get back to my group and I told the kids. I said, Hey, listen. When the, when Coach comes out here. He's going to talk about a particular play that I had against them. I ran against them in Kansas City. Mm. You know, you watch. 
They said, yeah, no way. You can't, it's not going to do that. It's not going to remember. I said, well, you want to bet? Coach comes out. The first thing he says, he said, guys, listen up, listen up. I got to <laughs> tell you, that was one play in Kansas City. It was beautiful running play that I ever seen Christian run. Oh, man. <laughs> I think I remember. First of all, I... I remember that game. Is that from 89? Is that during the 89 season? I believe it was 89 or 90. One of those yeah. years. Yeah, because um, it was towards the end of the season. The Dolphins were 8-7. and seven, And um, the the Chiefs, I think, were like also 8-7 and seven or 7-8 seven and eight or, or something like that. Like it was very close uh, uh, um, things. And like both teams are trying to make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and uh, we went we went to Kansas City and you guys beat our ass. Yeah, we beat you guys. And uh, so he talked about that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. And the, the Dolphins didn't make the playoffs that year. And uh, the Dolphins were were uh, um, came back at the end of the game. You know, they, um, yeah, I yeah. actually believe that you scored the first touchdown and um, your kicker missed the extra point. Yeah. Um, and you guys yeah. were that up was that. Uh, that was in uh, in Miami. Oh, was that in Miami? That was in Miami that he missed the extra point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Because did, did you play in the in the in, in the playoff game with where Joe Montana was the quarterback? Uh, no, I didn't play. I didn't play. No. Because like when 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 you left uh, the because you left the Chiefs in '93, right? Yes. And, and Montana got there. Didn't he also get there in '93 or? He got there in '93. Yes. So. Okay. I, Left, I left during the 93 season. Got it. Yeah, they put me in injury reserve, so I just went home. Right, right. So so, so you never got to play with Joe? No, I was in camp with him and stuff, but no, not in a regular season game. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's, um, what, what's it like for somebody who's never played, I played high school football, but it's, it, it's, you know, it's like little kids. Um, what, what's it like to be a player of your caliber that was redefining the position back then? Because yes, you know, after you left the game, we've had guys like, if I were to think about guys that compare with you to some degree, you have guys like Jerome Bettis, who was big, but definitely not as fast and as strong as you were, right? So like, I'm not sure you can totally put him in there. Steven Jackson, who played with the Rams, also had a very big frame and he did have a lot of speed and mobility. Then you have Ricky Williams, who I think had the speed and the strength, but didn't have the size, right? He, he's only 5'9", you're 6'1", right? Yeah. So, And then now you got Derrick Henry, who's probably, to your point, the closest thing to a Christian Okoye that, that we've seen. But did you know that you were redefining the potential of what this position could do when you were playing? No, I didn't know. I was just, you know... Um concentrate on my do do my my job um right and you have to understand of course uh, throughout my career i was still learning the game i only played three years of organized football before i was drafted in the second round so um throughout my career i was still learning the game trying to figure things out right and, and what was the most difficult thing about the game um that you had to adapt to just contact <laughs> running, right. to, running to me i wasn't right. Yeah. Right. Because like you're, you're not sure if you're like, this means that we have to start uh, fighting or, or something, right? Like, like it's, 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 it's hard when people hit you. Yeah. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. But I had to roll with it because that's what the game calls for. And um, I had to learn to deal with it. And, and let me ask you a question. Who was the guy who, first of all, two questions. Who was the guy that you remember trucking the hardest? Because like you kind of invented trucking for a whole generation like 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 when people would talk about getting trucked everybody was like yo man you're like you know you're like christian okoye you, you know like 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 you just ran through that guy is there any <laughs> moment that you remember where you just ran through a guy you know trust me i didn't even pay attention man I <laughs> on the ball you know i'm sure every game somebody would tell me that man you ran me over <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of guys that play in the nfl that tell me the same thing and stuff so you know, uh, so I didn't keep count. I didn't look right. back who it was. I just get up and go back to the huddle and wait for another time. So right, right. So so it it was all business. Huh? It was pure like you were just doing your job. 
That's right. That's right. Like you know, again, I didn't I didn't play football growing up, so um, I'm just paying attention to what I was doing, just concentrating because these other guys that are playing against and playing with, they've been playing since childhood, so um, the game was new to me. And, and when 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 you started, when you got drafted and started becoming a, a, a kind of a household name in the world of football in the late '80s. How was it like back home? Like back home in Nigeria, were you like a huge star? Was this some like like did, did did the whole country start kind of becoming football fans? What what kind of effect did it have in your in your homeland? Well, you have, you have to understand, soccer was the big thing in Nigeria. So football, yeah, they showed they did a story of me, which they showed over and over and over again in Nigeria. So people became familiar with American football. And um, as you can see today, you have uh, you know tens of Nigerians and Africans playing in the NFL, right? Um, and a lot of them would tell you because my parents put me in Papua because they think uh, if Christian can do it, maybe my my kid can. Oh, that's awesome! They started putting their kids in the Papua um, and uh, junior league and stuff, and now now many of them are playing in the NFL. Right, right. Um, what? There, there's another um, kind of jumping all over the place here a little bit, but uh, there's another very cool athlete who also uses the name, the Nigerian nightmare, uh, Kamaru Usman. Are you aware of Kamaru Usman? Do you know him? Do you follow his yeah. career at all? Yeah, I follow him. Yeah. I yeah. Have him. you guys ever met or have you guys ever said, hey, that's originally my nickname? Give, you know, make sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I met him. I, actually, I went to one of his fights in uh, Las Vegas. So um, he's a he's a good athlete. Good oh, he's athlete. incredible. Yeah, he's absolutely incredible. I mean, you know, anybody can call themselves Nigerian Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> My honor. Right. Know, I own the name. So it wasn't like, uh, it's not like he's going to be selling shirts on it. Right. And, yeah, so... Did you come up with that name, or did or, or did one of your player friends or somebody gave it to you? Was it the media? How how did that name come about? My teammates started calling me that in practice, you know. Mm -hmm. So and that kind of got stuck when ESPN came to Kansas City to interview me, and of course they had to interview my teammates about me, and um, they were they were all calling me a Nigerian nightmare. So uh, Chris Berman kind of. Picked it up from there and blew it up. Oh, so it was Chris Berman who who, yeah. uh, who uh, blew it up. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, when when you um when when you were in Miami for the Super Bowl, um, was was there anything from Don Shula that kind of um or even before the the Miami Super Bowl stuff, w w was there anything about his understanding of the game? that kind of stuck with you, you know, as, because I know that you're also involved in, in, in teaching young kids. And um, I believe you were a part of a, of a, um, of a baseball uh, uh, team. You, you invested inside of a, was it a baseball team that you invested in? Yeah. The golden. Yeah. What, yeah. what was there some stuff that, that you took either from Shula or Schottenheimer or, or like these big lessons that you impart onto the kids that that you kind of oh, help yeah. bring up. Oh yeah, patience, patience, patience. Being, being persistent. You know, never giving up. You know, uh, realizing your goal and sticking with it and finding a way to get there. Uh, those are the things that the coaches taught me, Mar uh, Marty Schottenheimer and Don Schuler, of course. And uh, I mean, those guys are teachers. They teach you on how to handle yourselves and how to, you know, progress towards your goal. Uh, so that's what they did for me. Yeah. Did um, are you involved currently with 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 education? What 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 kind of stuff are you doing these days? Well, I have my foundation, so I work with kids for twenty five, actually for twenty seven years. That's awesome. I had a um, I had my foundation uh, just working with kids, trying to bring them out of their environment and teaching them to set goals and uh, going towards their uh, life improvements and, and things like that. So, um, which we kind of still do today, but not as much as I used to. Right. Yeah. And, and what's the name of the foundation? I'll make sure to like link it and promote it. What, what, what's the name of the foundation? Christian Okoye Foundation. Christian Okoye Foundation. And currently you're based out of California? Yes. Southern California. 
Cool. Pretty much the same place that you moved to when you came here from Nigeria, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's the same area. Yeah, that that's cool. So the the Kansas City Chiefs, um, you know, won the Super Bowl a few years ago. Were you uh, there when they won the Super Bowl? I think they won it in Miami, as a matter of fact. It was in Miami. Yes, I was there. You yeah. were there. How, what 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 was that like to be part of like Chiefs Nation and actually finally get that Super Bowl? It was it was completely awesome. You know, I never thought it would happen, but it happened, and um, you know, we're all happy about that. And of course, the next year we went back to the Super Bowl. Right. Uh, hoping it was going to happen, but Tom Brady stole it from us. <laughs> but I think uh, I think this time we might we might do it again. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. You're only one game away from going back to the big dance. You know, yeah. um, um, what what's the current? Um, do, does the team kind of bring you in to, to sort of chat with you know with the players? Like um, you know, do no. you still or like are you still involved with the team in, in any way or not really? I'm involved somehow, but not uh, not uh, as far as speaking to the players. Right, right, right. So yeah, I get back and um, kind of do some some events that they are doing and stuff. Uh, be a part of the ambassadors. Right. Yeah. And what when did you you got inducted into the Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame and the Ring of Honor? Um, what year was that? What year did that happen? I think it was uh, two thousand. 2000 yeah and what was that you know did that because look for somebody you know you had an incredible um career but you know sadly you didn't really get to play all that much if you know if that's okay that i say that you know um you know you you, you had um from 87 to 92 um you know in your rookie season you had you know some 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 problems with your thumbs uh, like like i remember um, and then you had that breakout year, which is incredible. And then I think the year after that, you also had a big 1,000 yard season, made the Pro Bowl again. Um, but it seems like your effect on football was bigger than what you did on the field for some reason. You know, there's players that like just stick around um, in people's brains even more than what they did on the field. Mm -hmm. um, did, did it feel good to finally get that kind of ring of honor? You know, um, uh, acknowledgement. Well, well, of course. Any anytime you're rewarded, you know, I mean, it feels good. You, it, it tells you that somebody was watching. Yeah, that you it did something for somebody to notice. So, um, yes, it feels good to be part of that ring of honor in Kansas City and uh, to be remembered. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you ever uh, pick up uh, the you know the football and still play a little bit or run around a little bit? <laughs> no way, right? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Jeez, <laughs> I'm too beat up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do you still have a little bit of knee problems to this day, I or is that all completely fixed? I still have everything problems. I have my back, my neck. I've had twelve surgeries. So. Oh man, that's rough, yeah, man. Yeah. What 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 do you think? Is there a fix for that, you know, for, for, um, for, for players? Is it better healthcare? Like, like what, what's, or, or, or is that just the reality of playing such an incredibly aggressive physical sport, you know, that is just. Well, yeah, it's aggressive physical sport. And um, also uh, they're doing their best to kind of uh, protect players because football is a violent sport, mm. a violent sport. So, and when it's violent like that, it can it can prevent um, injuries sometimes. So, but they're trying to find ways to keep players safe by, you know, instilling one of those uh, some of these uh, you know rules during uh, a football game. And many people complain about it, saying that it's, it's delaying games, it's calling for everything. But players have to be protected, right? You know, have to be protected. We were not protected when I was playing, but but now, of course, with the big money, you know, out there, if you pay somebody as much as you're paying them, you don't want them to be around playing. So um, they have to find a way to protect players, and they're doing it. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, that's really interesting from that perspective because, like, as a fan of football, I'm like, oh, you know, the game isn't like as tough as it used to be. Quarter, you know, like. Players are getting flags for stuff that's just ridiculous. Like, how can you get a flag for that? Um, but I guess, uh, you know, I'm not thinking of it 
in terms of like what these players are going through, you know? So from your perspective, you actually think that this quote unquote kind of softening of the game is a good thing. It is a good thing for the, for the players. Yes. Yeah. 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 Maybe not for the fans, but for the players. Yes. Do you think that there's a medium there or is it just really one or the other? You really can't have them both. You can't have them both. I mean, um, you have to protect players as much as you can, and that's what they're doing, you know. And um, I mean, and players still get hurt, so it's oh, a college sport. So anything you can do to minimize the uh, injuries, they are doing it. Look at Derrick Henry, right? He was on a, on a pace for an incredible season, and you know, yeah. gets hurt and like you know misses out on on most of the season. It, it, it's 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 a very rough thing. Yeah. Um, the the um, uh, I. I I, uh, oh, with the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm sure you watched, or maybe you, you know, did you watch the Kansas City Chiefs Buffalo Bills game? <laughs> of course, I was there. Oh, 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 okay, you were there. Wow. First of all, it's a great game to be at. I mean, I couldn't believe what what happened on the field. Um, but the Buffalo Bills have the best defense in the NFL, like the best passing defense in the NFL, mm -hmm. and and it just seemed like they were you know, playing catch, you know, like Mahomes and Kelsey, Mahomes and number 10, you know, Tyreek Hill. It just seemed so open. Is that the bad part of the rule changes or is that just bad defense? Um, it's not bad defense, you know. You have, you have to give credit to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs offense because we're very creative. We have a great quarterback, maybe the best quarterback, talented quarterback in the league. Yeah, agreed. You know, um uh, they had to figure out a way to make things happen, and they did. I mean, 13 seconds left, you know, to go kick a field goal against the number one rated passing defense in the NFL, <laughs> and and you get there for a 49-yard try with three seconds left. I mean, it's just like it's mind-blowing stuff, you know. Sure um, is. Sure is. It end up when 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 you go to the games, are you like in a special area, or did you just go as a pure fan? I go as a, as a fan. I go and uh, hang out with my friends. Oh, that's awesome. And like when you get into the stadium, it's like the entire stadium, like like everybody knows who you are when you when you walk into Arrowhead, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's been a long time since I retired, but people still remember me. <laughs> of course they remember you, man. You're you're Kristen Okoye, man. You're an icon, you know, and, and, and I say that with all due respect, but you truly are a football icon. Um, back back when you played, you played with Steve DeBerg, right? Yes. Did you play with Steve DeBerg when he had that gigantic um, cast on his finger? Yes. <laughs> well, like, what what was that like during practice? Were you guys making fun of him? Like, I've always wondered that. Like, you know, I mean, because like the entire NFL knew about him and that big cast, you know, and like you guys, he still played. Yeah, we didn't make fun of him. We just right was able to play and he wanted to play so they had to make the cast for him in order for him to play and um he he did it he, he did it steve is just uh one of those guys who never gave up so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. He, he played for the dolphins too um after that you know yeah. he, he he went down to the dolphins he's a do, do you still keep in uh or did you keep in touch with him after you retired at all yes yes i talk to him all the time he lives in tampa oh he lives in tampa yeah that's cool, man. That's cool. Is, is there is there any other like strong relationships that you started in in football that have gone with you for the rest of your life? Well, you know, uh, my teammates. I still see them and talk to them all the time. Duran Cherry, Barry Ward, um, you know, a, a lot of the others. Uh, Jonathan Hayes, uh, still, right? Uh, Steve DeBerg, and uh, I go back. You know, for most of the home games. Uh, to watch the game and see my friends and enjoy the game with them. Um, and I'll, I'll be going back this weekend again for the AFC Championship. Oh, that's awesome. So, yes. Um, did you play with Andre Risen? Was he part of... What? No, no. He, he was right after you, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an interesting player, too. And, and uh, the other one I remember from those days was uh, uh, Dino Hackett. Was that his name? The yeah, Dino Hackett, middle linebacker for us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a hell of a linebacker, that guy. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so who was the guy I, I didn't get to, uh, uh, you know, because maybe you don't remember who you ran over, but was there somebody who hit you 
that you were like, damn, okay, you know, nice job. That was a good hit. Uh, that people hit me all the time. I'm a big, <laughs> I was a big back, so um, they don't bring me down easily. So people take shots at me. So right. that always, every game. Oh, yeah. At your knees, especially, huh? Yeah. Oh, man. So. If you were, if you were trying to like, give advice to like a young uh, uh you know football player like what what are the things that you wish you could have heard back then that you know now um luckily i was i was i was um, kind of a little older and um i came in with a track and field background so uh it it it, it didn't have to tell me a whole bunch um because i um i had the work ethics and mm -hmm. um I worked extremely hard in order to learn the game football, learn all the plays, which I'm not used to. Right. Um, so um, I, I worked extremely hard. I knew that I had to work hard to learn. The guys that I was playing with and playing against, against they played football all of their lives. They right, of course. As kids. So um, I had to play catch up. And um, that's what I did. What was there? Um, what what was that one play that when Steve DeBerg would say it in the huddle, you would say, "Okay, it's party time." Like like you knew that that was your play. Like, do you remember some of the verbiage of some of the plays that 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 would get called in there? I'd love to hear no, that. No, we didn't have that uh, luxury to say, "Okay, it's party time." We had specific <laughs> plays. We ran uh, about two or three plays that I ran all the time. You know, running to the right and running to the left. <laughs> always inside tackle. So we didn't have to hide anything that we're doing. Marty used to say, everybody knew exactly what we're doing. Even fans in the stand knew <laughs> where we're going and what we're doing, and we're still going to do it, and we will be successful doing it. And we did. That's awesome, man. You're, you're, you're right. Like when the Chiefs came to town, you knew what was going to happen. You know, number yeah. 35 was going to get the ball. He's going like, to hurt you with it. Um, yes. Did, did you have a good relationship with your offensive line? Did you start to develop that bond yeah. with, the, with the guys up front? Yeah, I did. The great guys. David Lutz and, you know, Tim Gronhardt and Eric Wittman and, you know, all of them. Yeah. That's awesome. Great guys. Yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. What, what do you think is going to happen this weekend with the Chiefs? Of course, the Chiefs are going to win. You think that – you think it's a, it's a Chiefs – yeah, Chiefs – I mean, like – you got to give respect to the Bengals for even being there. Of course, you got to you got to respect them because they beat us. They're the only team that beat us this you know late in the season. So we have to get them back, and this is where it counts. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So do do you have a prediction for the score? No, no prediction. I don't Never, right? That's bad I, luck. I know. I know that we are more stuck than they are. So, Christian. It was such an honor to talk to you. You're you're a, a true inspiration for me my whole life. The idea of coming from a foreign land into like a because I'm also an immigrant. I came from uh, Venezuela. I didn't know how to speak English, you know. So I um you were such an inspiration to me and I'm so lucky and thankful that you gave me some time to talk to me, man. I really really appreciate that, Mr. Okoye. Well, thank you so much for having me. God yes. bless. And go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. And we will see you next time. All right.